welcome to the Meharry Medical College White Coat Ceremony. Come on, let's give a round of applause to these students. Let us take a moment in prayer. Great God, we thank you for this day, a day that we have never seen before and a day that we will never see again. God, you have brought us here from near and far to come together to celebrate this occasion that sparks a new beginning for these students. God, we thank you for this institution, Meharry Medical College, the faculty, the staff, and the students. God, we come right in this moment to focus and lean our hearts and ears to, to the moment where we're able to experience this transition for these students. So God, help them to understand, these students, that in this moment they are creating a historical marker in their lives. One that will carry them when fear sets in, one that will carry them when doubt sets in, when they go through hard times, they can remember this moment. It's not just about taking on a white coat, but carrying a mantle, a responsibility to do your will, worshiping you through the service of mankind. Thank you that this ceremony is a demonstration of your love and of your grace. We ask that you activate our senses right now. Help us to see your hand at work even now in this moment. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. If you believe and agree with this prayer, say amen. He really doesn't need any introduction. You know him and I know him as our chief cheerleader, the one and only Dr. James E.K. Hildreth. Good afternoon, everyone. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College, our tremendous faculty and our staff, and want to say welcome to all the family and friends who are here. And we're beginning our 148th academic session at Meharry Medical College. We've come a long way since 1876, when Dr. Hubbard taught the first students here at Meharry in the basement of a local church. Many, many thousands of students have passed through our corridor since that time, and all of them have gone out to, in their own way, change the world. This day is always a very exciting day in the life of our great institution when we welcome a group of new students. And for those of us who teach, mentor, assist, and support the students, it's our way of touching the future by paying a small part of getting you ready to go out and change the world, which all of you are gonna do in the future. The ceremony you're about to witness marks a transition that has occurred for these outstanding young men and women. They're lo no longer laypersons, but have been admitted into the healthcare professions, professions that are highly respected, and rightly so. These are professions where integrity, service, and commitment are paramount. In the earliest days of medicine in the United States in the late 18th century, Healers were characterized by quackery, mysticism, and many shady characters call themselves quote unquote doctors. In order to symbolize and emphasize that medicine had transitioned to a scientific discipline and science guided the medicine we practice, physicians co-opted the most recognized symbol of the scientists which is a white coat. Since that time, the white coat has been closely associated with medicine, dentistry, and other healthcare professions. So to my young colleagues, welcome to the healthcare professional, as a professional, and remember that the white coat represents your commitment to hold up the high standards expected of you by our professions. Integrity, honesty, and a lifelong commitment to continual learning and meaning no insult to our tremendous faculty because they're great, but you need to know that much of what you learn will turn out to be incorrect because we learn new things. 
and there's a difference between information and knowledge. My point is, as you'll hear later, it's going to be really important to be a lifelong learner because it's not so important what you learn sometimes, but how you learn it and teaching yourself how to learn. The other thing is, you know, our motto is worship of God through service to mankind. We were born in a church. We were inspired by a gift from a philanthropist or for a family that was Christian to a church. And our motto is worship of God through service to mankind. So in a way, we are a religious institution. But in the words of Paul Tillich, everyone who walks this earth is religious, even those who call themselves atheists, because all of us have something that is our ultimate concern. And his definition of religion is your ultimate concern. For some people it's sex, for some people it's money, for some people it's power, some is recognition, but you now have an ultimate concern, which is to prepare yourself as best you can so that when that person sits in front of you and puts their most precious possession in your care, which is their health, that you'll be prepared to give them your best. It's what we expect of you as Meharians. It's what's expected of you as physicians. But the legacy you now join is tremendous because you're now part of the Meharian diaspora. And we welcome you into that diaspora. And we're so happy to have you all with us in that family because we are a family. Congratulations on all you've achieved so far to you and your families. And one thing I want to mention is all of us at some point need help. Whether you're the president of a college or a first year medical student, all of us need help. When you need help, please ask for it because that's why we're here. All of us are here to ensure your success because your success is our success. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yes. Congratulations again, and thank you all for being here this, this afternoon. That's our chief cheerleader, so you, you know we're in real good hands. Well, we have someone pretty special. She's really new. And when I said new, she's brand spanking new. That's the dean of the medical school. Her first day with us was August 1. Her first day in the office was this past Monday. <laughs> so she's brand spanking new. But she, we are just excited to have Dean Sonia Harris Haywood with us. Um, she's got so much to bring and to give and she's so excited and we're glad she's a Meharian, so. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To Dr. Hildreth, my colleague, Dr. Pinnock, Dr. Johnson, our guest speaker today, Dr. Horton, to my team, faculty, and staff, I am so glad to have this opportunity to send greetings to all of you today. We are here to celebrate you, the class of 2027, at your white coat ceremony. Let's take a minute, because we haven't had the opportunity, and salute this class. want to commend you, commend you, the class of 2027. Your dream is no longer deferred as the great poet Langston Hughes feared. The countless hours of medical education is in your past. You are a member of Meharry School of Medicine 148th entering class. Yes, you are now a history fact in the making. Please applaud yourselves. I also want to thank the faculty, administrators, and staff who come out to support you, our students. 
special acknowledgement to the white coat presenters. These individuals are just a few of Meharry's dedicated team who have committed their careers to educating the next generation of physicians. I need us to give them an applause. You, the class of 2027, are living your dream of becoming a physician. Your dream, which is a dream within a dream, a dream within the dreams of your family, friends, mentors, sponsors, and coaches, and all the people who are here that have been a part of your village supporting you. I need you to stand and give them some applause. Yes. It's okay that you meant you stand, but we have plenty of time over the next four years to acknowledge them. <laughs> Class of 2027, today is your white coat ceremony. I wanna take a few minutes to emphasize the significance of the white coat you will soon wear. The white coat symbolizes the medical profession for over 100 years. It has been our symbol. The 34-year-old white coat ceremony represents a rite of passage, signifying your commitment to the lifelong pursuit of medical knowledge and the care of your patients. The short white coat, which you will receive today, symbolizes that you are a medical student in training to become a physician training for the honor to have patients place their trust in you. Seeking silence and guidance during the most vulnerable times of their lives. You are in training to save lives. Make no mistake about that. It was 30 years ago this month that I was sitting where you are, beginning my first year of medical school. Although I didn't have the privilege of having a white coat ceremony and receiving my white coat in front of family and friends and faculty. When I did get it, I had instant pride in my white coat when it was given to me in a plastic bag one day sitting on a chair when I was going into a lecture hall. But I kept it clean, ironed and wore every opportunity I could. Every day, that white coat means something to me. And even today, years later, I have immense pride in my white coat. Today, I feel especially blessed to stand in front of you for the first time in my Meharry white coat. I will be honored to wear it in clinic when teaching or seeing patients. It will be a constant reminder to myself and others that I am a member of a noble profession and a member of Meharry's team. I am a team member right now at Meharry School of Medicine, and that is such a great honor. When you take your oath today, commit yourself to wearing your Meharry white coat, as I do. You can commit as a symbol of respect for our profession, as a symbol of admiration for those who've come before you, the legacy of 140 plus classes of Meharry graduates. But most of all, you need to determine what it symbolizes for you and wear your white coat first and foremost for that reason. Congratulations again on embarking on this remarkable journey to becoming a physician. You are Meharry's future. You are a history fact in the making. Thank you. And now, you see we have our new dean. She's ready to go. So we are all ready to move forward. 
Well, we've got some Meharians that have some great things to say to you. And one of them is Dr. Heather Horton. And she's a Meharian that sat where you're sitting now, not too long ago. She's a neurologist in Franklin, Tennessee. She's affiliated with multiple hospitals in the Georgia area, including Bayshore Medical Center at Hackensack Meridian Health in Rar Raritan Bay and Old Bridge Medical Centers at Hackensack Meridian Health. Dr. Horton has a wide array of experiences from private practice, traditional neurology, neurohospitalists, and teleneurology. After earning a doctorate of medicine from, <laughs> come on, that was pretty weak. <laughs> Let me try that again. After earning a doctorate from, <laughs> now, uh, Dr. Dr. Horton continued an internship and residency at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Dr. Horton is certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. Since graduating from Meharry Medical College and completing her residency at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Dr. Horton has been in practice. Dr. Horton is a well-published physician and has been spotted in the Middle Tennessee Health and Wellness Magazine discuss, discussing topics such as multiple sclerosis and dementia. In her free time, Dr. Horton enjoys spending time with her son, Hugh, and her baby triplet daughters, Heather, Daisy, and Poppy, as well as cooking and traveling. And Dr. Horton came from her busy schedule to tell y'all something very special. Dr. Heather Horton. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, and most importantly, the incredible students of Meharry Medical College. It was not all that long ago I was where you are sitting today, and it's an, truly an honor to be asked to return and speak with you all today. Today we gather here for a momentous occasion, the white coat ceremony, a symbolic rite of passage that marks the transition from classroom learning to the world of clinical medicine. As you prepare to embark on your years ahead of medical school, heading into clinical rounds, I stand before you with immense pride and admiration for the journey you have undertaken thus far. The white coat itself is a symbolism of professionalism, purity, and the trust bestowed upon medical professionals by society. It represents the transition from being a medical student to becoming a healthcare provider with real responsibilities. You may be surprised to learn that prior to the late 19th century, doctors wore not white, but black garb. Physicians wore black for their patient interaction since medical encounters were thought of as serious, formal matters. Doctors then dressed more like clergymen, and as a matter of fact, nuns in black habits served as nurses. To this day, nurses in England are called sisters because of modern medicine's origins as a last resort and frequent precursor to death. The solemn nature of the healthcare practitioner's role in encounters with parishioners was reflected in their black dress. It wasn't until the close of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries that medicine became the truly scientific enterprise we now know, and the whiteness or pureness of medicine became reflected in the garb of physicians and nurses and gave way to the garb you are now honored to don today. The moment is not just about putting on a white coat. It symbolizes the responsibilities, the privileges, and the trust bestowed upon you as future physicians. As students of a historically black medical school, you carry with you the weight of a rich legacy. The trailblazers before you shattered barriers, overcame adversities, and paved the way for your presence here today. 
you stand on their shoulders and it is your duty to honor their sacrifices and the dreams of your community. This year will be a turning point in your medical education as you move beyond textbooks and lectures and step into the real world of patient care. The clinical setting will challenge you in ways you've never experienced before. Embrace it with open arms, for it is here that you will discover the essence of medicine, the art of healing, the power of compassion, and the beauty of humanity. Now, at some point in your journey, you will find yourself squarely at the intersection of these three principles, as I did when I was introduced to a patient that would change the trajectory of my career right here at Meharry Medical College. This patient was a 22-year-old with an inoperable brain tumor. The tumor was pushing and compressing her optic chiasm, gradually causing her to become blind. Going blind, particularly at such a young age, is an incredible thing to bear. But her family assured us that she was strong. The patient felt that she was strong and she was prepared to handle whatever was going to come her way. Shortly thereafter, the patient became paralyzed in her lower extremities. Extensive testing was done Testing was repeated days later, hoping maybe something would change and we would find something treatable. The testing remained normal. The patient assured that she continued to remain strong. Her family was always at bedside. She had good family support, social support. After extensive testing, diagnosis of exclusion was made, known as conversion disorder. Nowadays, we call it functional neurological disorder. It was this case that inspired me to pursue neurology because it allowed me to see not only the complexity of medicine, but the need for compassion and humanism in medicine. Nowadays, we have a phrase, you know, check on your strong friends. This case brings new meaning to that. Um, your friends may be experiencing things, or your patients, your friends, your patients, your family may be experiencing things and not outwardly showing them in ways that you would expect. So as doctors, as compassionate human being doctors, it is important for you to remember that compassion and humanism side of the things that you learn in your textbook to be a fully rounded physician. As you embark on clinical rounds, remember that medicine is not just about diagnosing diseases and prescribing treatments. It is about connecting with your patients on a human level. Each person who lies in that hospital bed has a story, fears, dreams, and loved ones waiting anxiously outside the doors. Listen to their stories, for they will tell you more about their condition than any lab test can. In an age when artificial intelligence is increasingly used to press, process vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and assist in diagnostics, it's important to remember that there is one thing that AI cannot do. Be you. The human personal element of healthcare is more important now than ever. Bedside manner, the interpretation of nonverbal cues, Cultural sensitivity and the capacity to provide emotional support are key functions of an effective physician that a computer cannot replicate. So as you move forward in your medical careers, be encouraged. These tools are developing in order to help you. You could never be replaced. Oliver Sacks, the famed British neurologist, put it best. In examining disease, we gain wisdom about anatomy and physiology and biology. In examining the person with disease, we gain wisdom about life. You will encounter moments of triumph and joy, witnessing the impact of your interventions. However, there will also be moments of heartache when despite your best efforts, you may not be able to save someone's health. During these times, do not lose sight of the fact that you are not alone. Lean on your mentors, your fellow students, and your support network. In the face of adversity, remember the strength that brought you here, the strength derived from your community, 
your ancestors, and your own indomitable spirit. The way to being an MD has been paved for you by many black Americans who came before you, and most notably, the first black American to become a physician, Dr. James McCune Smith. Born in 1813, Dr. Smith somehow overcame the barriers of his time to attain remarkable educational achievements and professional success. After being denied admission to American medical schools due to racial prejudice, Dr. Smith pursued his medical education in Scotland, where he earned his medical degree from the University of Glasgow in 1837. Upon returning to the United States, he became a prominent advocate for civil rights working tirelessly to combat racial inequality and uplift the African-American community. Dr. McCune Smith's medical practice and intellectual contribution significantly impacted the field of medicine, and his advocacy played a pivotal role in advancing the rights and opportunities for African-Americans in the 19th century. His legacy stands as a testament to resilience, determination, and the enduring fight for equality in the face of adversity. And this is a legacy that you join today. You have proven time and again that you belong here, that you are capable, and that you are meant to make a difference in the lives of countless people just like Dr. McCune Smith. Let this year be one of growth, not just as future physicians, but also as compassionate human beings. Take the time to understand the perspectives of those from diverse backgrounds, for medicine is a tapestry woven from the threads of various cultures, experiences, and beliefs. Embrace diversity and let it enrich your practice. As you progress through rotations, don't be afraid to ask questions, challenge norms, and advocate for your patients. You are the voice of the voiceless, and your actions can change lives. Be humble enough to learn from your mistakes and resilient enough to stand tall after setbacks. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Always remember that the pursuit of knowledge doesn't end with medical school. Medicine is an ever-evolving field, and you must commit yourself to a lifetime of learning and growth. Seek opportunities for continuing education and research for they will keep you at the forefront of medical advancements. As you wear your white coat, remember that it carries the hopes and aspirations of your community. It represents not just your own achievements, but also the collective determination to uphill, to uplift and heal. Let it be a reminder of the incredible responsibility you bear and the profound impact you can make on the lives of others. I implore you to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Be compassionate healers, fierce advocates, and lifelong learners. Draw strength from the legacy of those who came before you and the support of your community. You are the future of medicine, and I have no doubt that you will shine brightly, illuminating the path for generations to come. Congratulations, and may you have a transformative and aspiring year ahead. Thanks, Dr. Horton. Well, it's the moment you've been waiting for. Um, there's going to be a slight change in the program. Uh, the program says Dr. Dontel Johnson's going to present the, the names and stuff. He almost lost the rest of his hair uh, when he saw that. Um, I, I'm going to give him a reprieve since I practice on y'all's names, so we're going to let him do the oath of commitment, and I will present your coats. How about that? <laughs> um, this is the moment we've been waiting for. And so we're going to ask our faculty to come um, and line up. I'm going to call their names. I'm going to ask them to wave at you. Um, and then um, the family members that are going to don uh, your coat, um, once we call your name, they will come and stand in front of our faculty members and don you, and then you'll go back to your seat.
So our faculty members, Dr. Kevin Billups, Dr. Tiffany Turner, Turner Dr. Amosi Mkoma, Dr. Sakina Elton, Dr. Alberto Rains, Dr. Mary Gerges, uh, Dr. Dana Marshall, Dr. Christopher Kiefer, Dr. Linda Plummer, Dr. Flora Ukoli, uh, Dr. Suzanne Tropez Sims, Dr. Exalina Bean, Dr. Alfred Shaw, Dr. Keith Lustig, Dr. C.V. Dash, Dr. Michael Rhodes, Dr. Carrie Satella, Dr. Larry Alexander, Dr. Billy Ballard, Dr. Richard Akataway, Dr. Alfred Nyanda, Dr. Calvin Smith, and Dr. Lorda Williamson. All right. All right, students, here we go. Ebtisan Ahmed. <laughs> Etu Naula Ale Lua. Dylan Allison. Yeah. Sadiq Ben Elsa. Yeah. Kofi Bohin. Yeah. Denia Bro. Yeah. Sadell Davis. Gamayel Dezuma. Yeah. Jacob Gravit. Yeah. Akeem Henry. Yeah. Zuhela Hirid. Yeah. Sheldon Irving. Carmelia Jackson, sorry. <laughs> Stephanie Jenkins. <laughs> Mariam Caldas. <laughs> Carson Lewis. <laughs> Roxanne Mansuri Dara. Jade Matthews, Malik Matthews, you need one more, Diamond Moses, <laughs> presenters. Please don your students. All right, students, you may be seated. <laughs> All right. Facil Mulat. Crystal 
will co-roll. <laughs> Gerald Nawuso. Wusu. <laughs> Kandi Okina. Ala Toba, let me try that again. <laughs> Sorry. Ade Tobawo Oluwa. <laughs> Emanuela Owu Bosom. <laughs> Booyah. Chandler Aparo. Ikena Asumale. <laughs> Koran Patel. <laughs> Gabria Monet Pearson. Isaiah Pickett. <laughs> Clifford Pierre. <laughs> Abena Prempa. <laughs> Gabrielle Quinn. Samhita Ravi. Danica Ross. Sydney Scott. Jasmine Sistrunk. Olamide Sogeke. <laughs> Aparna Suranisu, let me try it again. Aparna Suwani Wasum. <laughs> Presenters, would you don your students? Students, you may be seated. David Stewart, Jr. Brandon Sublet. Corbin Tabad. Ehoma Tassi. Courtney Tate. <laughs> Edward Taylor. <laughs> David Thomas. <laughs> J. 
Jordan Tucker. Winston Turner. Chanaze Udekwe. Deanna Webb. Zane Wilson. Jarisha Woods. Frank Wright. Christopher Xavier. Priya Yameli. Joseph Johannes. Presenters, please don your students. Students, you may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, faculty. You may be seated. Now, since Dr. Johnson got to retain his hair, he's going to come and deliver the uh, commitment, the oath to you. Um, I think I have the toughest job because I have to go um, after all these amazing people up here. Um, our president um, battled the pandemic and helped us come out of that, helped our, our global pandemic. Um, Dr. Heather Horton, a mother of, of three triplets. I'm a, I'm a pediatrician by trade, and so I, thank you. Um, and our new dean who's gonna help usher us in to the next 150 years of Meharry greatness. Uh, Dr. Pinnock, as, as this class can tell you, she's just amazing. She taught me uh, pediatrics as well. Um, but I'm gonna do my best. And y'all really dodged a bullet with me saying some of y'all's name. Bless your parents, bless everybody. Okay, so I get to uh, do the oath of commitment. Um, uh, if you allow me just a little bit to just speak on what this commitment is. Uh, I've taken five oaths in my life so far. Uh, my first oath was to my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I learned a lot about commitment with that one, um, helping people that couldn't vote, uh, get registered to vote. Uh, my second commitment, or my second oath, 
was when I got married. Uh, if you're a husband, uh, you know about commitment when your wife says, hey, I need a glass of water, and it's the middle of the night, and I just walk from downstairs. Um, <laughs> and my third commitment was when I graduated from Meharry Medical College as a doctor. Um, and Meharry said, you know, go represent us well. Uh, my fourth commitment was when I was inducted as an officer into the Tennessee Army National Guard. Um, but it's this fifth commitment that I really wanted to talk with y'all about. It's this OFA commitment that you're going to take as a medical student here at Meharry Medical College. Um, there are going to be some tough days ahead, and you're going to need each other. Um, but you're a family. That's one of the best things about Meharry is that we are truly a family, and we look after each other. Um, and I say that from experience, right? So when it gets really tough, look to your left or to your right, and you will be there. Someone will be there for you. And when you need help, the faculty are here for you. Everyone up here on this floor is here for you, and we will help see you through. All right? Um, and so without further ado, let's say this commitment. Can you rise, please? All right, so we'll read it in unison. The Oath of Commitment. As I begin my career as a student physician here at Meharry Medical College, I make this commitment. I will accept nothing other than the full pursuit of excellence for myself in this my chosen career. I will hold and violate the trust and confidence that patients extend to me as a student physician. I will always respect patients as persons and protect patient autonomy, elevate patient welfare above all other concerns, and treat all persons with compassion and dignity. I will treat all those who seek my help with humanism and compassion. I will offer to my fellow students any help or assistance that is within my power to give, should they require it, and extend to them the same respect and trust that I wish to be shown to me. I will safeguard and nurture a culture of integrity and trustworthiness at Meharry Medical College and in our profession by encouraging my peers to act ethically by responding appropriately. I will conduct my personal and professional life with total integrity. I will be trustworthy and act with integrity in all spheres of professional life, academics, patient care, clinical research, and professional relationships. I will not cheat, plagiarize, use unauthorized material, misrepresent my work, falsify data, or assist others in the commission of these acts, and enter into a mutual relationship of trust and respect with those who teach me, recognizing that their aspirations for me are inevitably greater than those I have for myself. I will continue the pursuit of new knowledge throughout the whole of my life if I am, and you will be, among the best in your profession, in my profession. Thank you all. I need to acknowledge some folks um, who helped get this, make this day happen. And um, I'd like to do that first, and then I'd like to, to usher you all on to your day. First and foremost, um, Tyler Dixon. You know as well as I know, this would not have happened without her help. And we really appreciate that, Tyler. Um, our faculty who came. Our volunteers, wave your hands, please. We got them all over the room. It's both students and staff that are helping us. The White Coat Committee, which is mostly faculty and some of the staff that's here. Our speaker, Dr. Horton. Um, and you, the family members of these wonderful students that we have. Uh, and let me just think, he, he, he does it because he he is who he is. Let me thank our chief cheerleader, Dr. Hildreth. Our new dean, Dean Harris Hayward. Doesn't she look good in her Meharry coat? That's the best coat she has in her 
her uh, wardrobe. And Dr. Robert Hall, Dr. Hall is, a, is our chaplain, but he's also become a good friend. I'm gonna have to give him cake because I, uh, uh, I just I invited him, but I didn't uh, tell him he needed to do this four times. And so <laughs> he so graciously helped me out. And so he's gonna get cake. I just wanted to tell you does anybody remember what number you are? You remember I told you you were a number. You remember that number? 1.5%. Families and friends, these young folks represent 1.5% of all the applications that we got here at Meharry. We got 7,500 <laughs> applications. If you don't think that's special, go read the Harvards, the Yales. That's not 1.0%, you're 1.5%. You're here because we chose you. You're here because we believe in you. We know you can do this. You represent what will be over 150 years worth of students in training. We have Meharians all over the world doing good things, and you will join them. So when it gets hard, as Dr. Johnson said, I want you to remember that. I want you to remember this. You got a lot of challenges. Our chief cheerleader started off um, Dean Harris Haywood gave you some more. Dr. Horton gave you some more. She talked about Dr. McCoon. Dr. McCoon Smith said, we will fight it out here. He was determined that he was going to represent his profession in a way to help his people. So that's the legacy. That's the shoulders you stand on. We support you. We care about you. We've invested in you. We want to make sure there's going to be two more celebrations, parents. I need you to put it on your calendar. One is match day. In about four years, it's going to be in March. 2027, March 2027, save the date. And the other one will be in May, the third Saturday in May 2027, when these young people walk across the stage. We want you to enjoy your folks. I forgot to say before, the students are going to sort of walk quickly up the hill. I almost said run, but I control myself. They're going to walk quickly up the hill to take the picture, and then they will come back. We have lunch for you over in West Basic. If you would go there and grab your lunch, and then the buses should be there to take you back to your car. But we thank you so much for coming. We thank you for the support you're going to give that you've already given and you will give to these fine young students. And we uh, hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.